is yet to come, I'm gonna solidify myself as the greatest welterweight of all time. If I'm gonna shock the world, give my happy dad special. Over here, chaos, chaos. What's up, nerds and virgins? It's Colby Chaos Covington, the undisputed king of Miami, the people's champ, America's champ, and most importantly, Donald Trump's favorite fighter. I'm a big fan of Colby, he's a winner, he's a champ. You know, one of my biggest hobbies is I like to go out and play poker. I just love the, the mental aspect to it, trying to outsmart your opponents. Also, I love going out with some of my South Beach mamacitas and drinking some Happy Dad. That's, that's life to me and that's balance. I'm not just a fighter, you know, I'm a, I'm a bedroom cardio freak. I'm a Happy Dad lover and I just like to compete. It's official, the King of Miami has teamed up with the champ of Hard Seltzer's Happy Dad. It's the dream team, baby, let's go! All right, boys, we got another Full Send Podcast episode today, another UFC episode. We got Colby Covington coming on. You guys saw we just signed him to Team Happy Dad, which is pretty crazy. So he's a uh, he's our third fighter. We got Justin Gaethje, Sugar Sean, of course, and now Colby Covington, a part of the Happy Dad family. Vegas fight week. It's going to be a crazy-ass fight week. Salim's back with us, too. What's up, guys? Salim's got to be on more pods, too. We yeah, always I'm tell you. More pods. I like him. We did like Wiz Khalifa as well. Salim's on that one. That'll come out next week. That one's fucking hilarious, too. But um, trying to keep the ball rolling with the pod. Let's go. Uh, what's good with the full aloe fit now? Yeah. I think, dude, I, I've been talking about it this. It does look nice, though. I think he's going to become a gym influencer. <laughs> I could see that. Happen. You know what I'm saying? After I've seen the 90 What is days a gym after? influencer, though? Like you're like a lifestyle, like running, like that's your content now. What like running? You're not like you're running you're not with the Kyle running CEO with prankster. You're running like, with the mayor and shit. <laughs> okay, yeah, I mean it's so pretty cool. That was, just smart, that was a smart post, you know. Yeah, that. yeah, it was cool. But I just <laughs> think, tell us of that one, eh? Yeah, I mean, I also have the key, but yes. Uh, oh, I talked to him about that. Yeah, might get locked. Lock, the locks might change. Fuck, bro. Yeah, I talked to him. I swear to God, he said he might be changing the locks. How was that? Brad's is definitely not working, but <laughs> yours, I don't know. We'll see. I'll try it out. <laughs> Put it to other. No, it's cool. The may uh, we met the mayor last time. He was in Miami UFC. That's when we like met him for the first time. We had dinner, and then I don't know. We just he's fucking cool as fuck, man. He's yeah. super normal guy, super humble, and then yeah, he just he's jacked. So he just hits me up, and he's just like, yeah, I want to work out. So we went there a few months ago, and then he he hit me up again and said, want to work out? Yeah, it's pretty sauce. Yeah, that's lit. Are you you, you know the Miami you dating love o- it too. Meg? No. What's up with that? I don't know if you saw that. They were in Cancun and he flew out OT Meg. No, first class. First class. She paid for her own flight. Really? Yeah. Seems she's like got it. She's her. got it like that. What the fuck? You dating her? Nah. It's not what the snap be looking like. I know, bro. What do you mean? Look like a fucking. What? You guys believe everything you see on Snapchat? I, you know. You flew a girl to like Mexico. I didn't fly. I didn't fly her. You invited her. Yeah, I invited her. Okay. It doesn't mean I'm dating her. <laughs> no, but uh, I'm happy for you guys. I hope everything goes well. Late, nah, dude. I mean, Jim bro she's, a, she's getting, actually a cool, she's a cool girl. She's OT makes cool as fuck. I mean, you know that. You met her before me. Yeah. So what? Yeah. <laughs> I forgot you took her to like, you met up with oh her at the Colorado God, football game. Yeah, bro. Brought her Friends. into the suite. Yeah, dude. And you're tripping me for Cancun and shit. <laughs> yeah. You, you brought out every fucking, she's a good friend. you brought out every weapon in the arsenal for that one. Yeah. I mean, I, sh- listen, she fucking wanted to hang out. I've. We hung out as I hung out with her as a friend, like made it clear. No, we're friends. Yeah, we're friends. Just, she's she's actually really vibe. cool though. She's a really cool girl actually. Yeah, cooler than I thought. But what are you gonna do about it right now, man? I mean, there's nothing to really. There's nothing to do about it in our current lifestyle. Well, dating. What maybe wait, after <coughs> you bulk? No, just then you'll get done, dude. It's just like you Stop guys know. Stopping, I mean, let's be real for a second. Pretend the cameras aren't here. You guys know for a fact. Like it's just. How are you going to have a relationship right now? It's really tough, you really bro. You really Why not, bro? Much, How? Much, what do you mean? This is the, I think this is the time to do it. You're not going out. You're not drinking. It's not about focused that. on your health. It's not about the other chicks. It's about having a girlfriend is just so much responsibility and work, which it should be. But it's just like. Not right now. When I was dating, it was just like. I mean, if you look at your day, you got 24 hours. How many hours a day do you got to spend on the girl a day? That yeah. she actually deserves. I'm not saying they don't deserve it, but yeah. like, think of it like that. Like what? Dude, you just can't. You can't have a needy chick. 
all chicks are needy, bro. Yeah, it's true. They're all gonna say they're not. Times. They're all gonna say they're not needy, and then they're gonna be needy. And then they want to go to everything too. But it's yeah, for me, ass. it's it's honestly not even about the other chicks. It's just like, dude, I don't want to watch what I have to say on the podcast. I don't want to watch what I have to do on Snapchat or fucking milk videos or like. I think until we're like, you know, I feel like we got another few years of chaos left with Happy Dad and traveling and like, you know. It is a full time job though. If you think about it. So it's just like it even if it's a hundred percent. But you're also it, like a full on gym bro. Yeah. That does, but that's nothing to do with anything. It's still a you've huge gotten a, you've gotten pretty cocky too. I'm not gonna lie. Actually, what? yeah. Like I, I don't know. How cocky than you? You and well, you and Gabe. Gabe What's shaking going his on? head. Gabe's cocky as fuck. He's fucking fat shaming me, which is out, out how of have I been world. being cocky? You just are, bro. Getting wh- texts, leaving re- our bombs. I al- I always left you. I left you on red when I was had a barrel. <laughs> I left you on red more when I had a barrel. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I feel true. like I'm more responsive now. Have you noticed, or does anybody treat you different now that you're like Mr. Transformation? Not really. No? It, it is a lot of people telling me, like, it inspired them and shit. That's good. A lot of chicks are like, yeah, you look good. What, what would you use for motivation? What? What would you use for motivation? When what? To go to the gym and shit. Sam Solik, I sort of got a DM to me. So he watches anime videos. <sighs> what? Yeah. I don't get what, that. Do you know what that is? What? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not, like, really, like, a gym bro. Like, I don't know. I still don't know too much about, like, the gym culture or, like, that type of shit. Wait, gym guys watch anime? Yeah, because they want to be like Dragon Ball Z characters, bro. What the fuck? I swear. <laughs> I think I would want to get jacked for the same reasons you would want to get jacked. Just why why jacked. would you want to get jacked? Birds. Number one. Uh, you feel good. Fighting. Okay, sure. Yeah, I mean, sure. Fighting. But like, you feel good. Like, if someone pisses me off, then you're confident, like, maybe I could kick that guy's ass. Sure. Like, right now, I don't think I could beat too many people. So, I'm trying to be top tier. Sure. Right? But yeah, you feel good. You don't want to be jacked for that? No, that like, I didn't. I didn't know, that wasn't one of my main motivations, but now that I think about it, yeah, that's kind of like a cool thing to have. Yeah, I don't know if it makes you that much better of a fighter, but I, I guess it can't hurt. Like in a bar. Yeah, sure. But you feel good, and yeah. you feel good mentally, and then of course, bro. I mean, like I said, my next girlfriend could be like my wife. If you like, we have everything else going for us. We have the success. I mean, maybe we're kind of funny, maybe not. Probably not. But um, and then if you look good too, it's just like then you have. You're firing you all on all, all That's cylinders. how you get. That's Dude, how I, you find that. I'm gonna be honest. I think you're going down that path. What path? Like I think marriage is next for you. Maybe in a family. I'm serious, dude. You see yourself? No, nah, not not yet. Honestly, nah. Just like I said, dude. It's just too much work. Bro. Well, not now, but down the line. Yeah, for sure. I hope so. I mean, I hope so. I mean, we always say shit in the, like this, and then in two years, it could be so different. Yeah, no. I think the. I think. I think the next few years is gonna be sick. Moving to Miami now, and like. Miami's nice, yeah. man. Miami's sick. There's a lot of girls. I don't believe people say you can't find a, a good girl there. In Definitely so- not. South Florida as a whole, though. Okay, if you go north of Miami, yeah. yeah. Miami's like you can not go a good all the way up to fucking West Palm and down. Yeah. Little roadie and shit. Are you going to get on the... You're chirping yeah. me for the no, gym. No, I'm going to. I'm going to. <laughs> Mine starts tomorrow. So why are you chirping me so hard, then? I'm just fucking around, dude. No, I know. But you've changed, but yeah. Well, it starts tomorrow. Yeah? Yeah. Red eye tonight. What's what's your uh, 120 day look like? like what uh, are you for gonna me, do? it's just gaining weight and just you know li- lifting heavy. I mean, I'm not I'm not in the gym five days a week or like what six six days a week. Um, there'll be you know Sundays will be day offs and stuff. I thought you're going through a rebound. Wait, what about how many night, how many days a week are you gonna drink? I'm gonna same have same? to do one one send a week. Yeah, I yeah. mean, when I seen you do it and like you actually like accomplish it, that made me think. All right, there's this a big sacrifice you have to do. So just don't just have one night a week. Yeah. And you got to just train hard. I got to eat a lot. You think you could do that next year, Sonny? Yeah, I think I have to for my mental. I think posting it, too, is like a great, great idea. That's what I'm going to do tomorrow as soon as I go to the gym, like day one. Well, because yeah. then, then you look like an idiot. If yeah, you, you look like an idiot if you don't do it. So, you gotta Wait, you're, po- you're, you're announcing it tomorrow that you're going to do yeah. it? Ooh, fuck. <laughs> Let's so go. Slim, 120 days. 20 days. Let's go. It's going to be interesting. I just got to... Now the pressure's on. Now no, it's on I'm the pod too. No, I, dude, I gotta say, like Gabe, Gabe's transformation kind of inspired. Are me you gonna too. post the weekly check-ins? Um, I was thinking of doing that. You but know, was, you know that that was a big yeah, thing that helped you think me. So? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You don't I'll have do to that. do it every week. I probably did it like maybe like eight or nine or like, but that does put pressure on you. So you should try to do it every week because the second you think about fucking off. You're like, fuck, I got to post a photo this Friday. And uh-huh. if it doesn't look good, 
you're gonna get roasted by the fans. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think posting. So is you guys got to roast Salim if if he doesn't start tomorrow. Everybody go to. You guys got to roast him, bro. If he's not making gains, dig no, into him, bro. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. That's what I told him to do to me. I mean, when I first, when I first remember Jeff Gloria when we were working out that time, I was getting like really big no, and I yeah. was looking you, nice. You'll get jacked so quick. Yeah, very easy. I just gotta eat a lot and I gotta just work out every day. Start tomorrow. Are you gonna do it? Start tomorrow. Start today. I'm starting today. <laughs> the biggest, the biggest shock would be if Steiny did it, bro. Yeah. Why? It just because like everyone just. Doesn't believe you could do it. <sighs> well, put the wrong one. So I think you can do it. I think you're going to do it in the new year. Yeah, I will. And then we'll see who gets cocky. Holy fuck. Eh? Well, Jesus you will, you Christ, will actually then. be a dickhead if you were Bro, fucking Jack. I'm a fucking genuine good person. No, you, you'd you be a dickhead. You could still be a genuine person and be cocky. Yeah. Well, whatever. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 120 days. <laughs> God, I wish we could get Gabe on here. He's really inspired me. That you guy's discipline and shit. Yeah, but po- post the check-ins every Friday. It's 120. Damn, I wish I could go to the Actually, UFC that fight. now that I think about it, that's going to be a key for you. Yeah. I mean, dude, it's just, it's diet. Diet's I a big guess. thing, too. It's just lifting, lifting hard and just fucking, I got to eat. I personally think for you, it's just the, if you, if you just keep it to once a week drinking, yeah. you'll be yeah. totally fine. Oh. That, that was what it always was for me, was just like the partying. 120. <laughs> so wait, wait, I wanted to ask you, I asked you. Steiny just knows when next yacht day we have in Miami, I'm just going to outwheel the fuck out <laughs> of <you. laughs> <laughs> no, dude. Whatever girl you're fucking talking to, too, I'm just gonna come right, with my go. tarp off. Okay, let's go. No, I'm just kidding. No, you can go for it. I'm actually so excited. I know. <laughs> I'm starting what what I'm kind excited. of like fitness influencer are you going for, though? I don't want to be like a fitness influencer. I just want to be you're like, wearing my like own person. You spent like thirty five hundred dollars at Aloe and Lulu. I've never spent day. a dollar at Aloe. Actually, Lulu? no, I have. I have, but they give me a lot of free shit. You should try wearing it. It kind of it changes your brain. Ask Jimmy. What, if you start wearing aloe? I swear to God, you put it on. Well, aloe's like, like a yo. lifestyle. That's when you're really in this fitness shit. Yeah. And you're like eating healthy. Chicks today. love aloe too, though. Yeah. All right, I'll do it. Fuck it. You want to do like a wager or something? Sure. Free roll? For you? Yeah. Sure. Okay, whatever you want to do. We'll talk about it. We'll, I'll make a bet with Steiny. You're going to do it in the new year, though. Yeah. yeah. I got to get this. January Let 1st. me at least get three weeks. Get, my get December. <laughs> Fuck. Have your four-day Vegas <laughs> bendy this week. I thought in ARPA, in Miami, I was going to go out one night. I think I went out four. It was fucking Did you? Three at least. Yeah, I'm going to be like your mental coach. You need to have like a door or a lock on the outside or something. Or someone. The thing with you, though, with that's what's so weird about you, though, is you have so many sober pumps. Yeah, I know. That's what I don't get. <laughs> Dude, I just like, like, what like you, fucking partying. Yeah, bro. you're just like partying. Yeah. Like, it's not even chicks for you. It's just fun. That's what I'm trying to figure out how to help you. But with I don't that. know, dude. It's uh, also like being at the club recently. I've. Honestly, been miserable. What? Like, I've just been sitting there like, yo, I've done this shit so many times. Why the fuck am I here? I swear. And then I do it again the next night. It's a fun time. It's just all about balance, I think. Yeah, no, we... For me, it's the chicks. Fun. It was fun. For me, it's the chicks. Any man. highlights? Yeah. Any highlights from Some Ito. We were chilling with John Summit in the uh, booth. He was fucking going crazy. That guy's a fucking animal. animal. John Summit. We've had him the, on the pod before. Yo, DJs are all fucking. Have you ever thought about this? They all party the hardest, and they're all they're all skinny as fuck. Yeah, because they don't eat. I never could figure well, that so out. They're, they're probably doing a bunch of drugs DJ. and shit, right? Yeah, they're doing a bunch of appetites. They literally travel and party harder than like we do. Well, they they go like every night, sometimes two different things saying. in a day. Yeah, and they're all like crazy. fucking like skinny jacked. <laughs> yeah, they, maybe they, I just become a DJ instead of doing the <laughs> transformation. <laughs> You get you a lot of card. You way. get a lot of cardio in the booth, and then you probably don't eat. You probably sweat like a motherfucker every night. Yeah. You don't really see them drinking beers and shit too. They just drink tequila. Yeah, vodka, tequila. Probably a little Molly on the side. And they get laid every night. They fuck every night. <laughs> and they make a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> what Have a I? lot of chicks hit you up to try to get to John Summit? No. Uh, yeah, probably actually. <laughs> I I kind I kind of noticed it too. <laughs> Yeah, I I put a couple people in my story and like they I kind of noticed said, it hey, too. do you think you could connect me with that person? Yeah. yeah, yeah. She's like what the fuck? The smoke like, show hit, the smoke show hit me up from LA and she's like I thought she just hit me up and she's like you going to John Summit on Thursday or whatever? In, like, in Vegas? No, nah, and uh it's I think he's in LA. So why don't you bring him? Bring her. Huh? Why don't you bring her? No, I'm not going to bring her if I know she just wants to slam Summit. What's the point of that? Yeah, I guess. I, I guess I could toss him a fucking layup, but <laughs> <laughs> Give him a little Christmas gift. You've been miserable at the club, for real? <laughs> yeah. What you, like, what are you thinking about? Just what the fuck am I doing here? 
Like, bro, I'll look at my phone and it's like 3 a.m. and I'm like, why am I doing this? <laughs> like, I'm, I, ca- I came here with my girl, too. Like, what am I yeah, doing Yeah, there's here? Just no point in going It's just, what, are, what am I doing? That's but yeah, dumb. you just keep going out. But I also, like, I don't know, dude. I think uh, we should also pick up, I don't know. I don't know. What? I don't know. I, I tried journaling, too. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. Like, in what way? <laughs> like, I just had... The my, five minute my brother had a five star journal? notebook at his place and I just fucking opened it up and tried to start writing. And I don't think I had the right like setting. But like it's Did it do anything? No. You just wrote about your day? Yeah. Have you tried meditating? No. Wait, in the <laughs> ice bath I will. The cold plunge. I'll buy you some shit for your Give me like a January first. Yeah. Can you have there's, a whole There's 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 one that all the chicks post about that it's called the five minute journal. Okay. And right, yeah. you just, it's not a journal. Are you, are you journaling now? No, I did it before, but uh, I don't, I haven't done that in a while. Um, but you write every day you wake up and you write three things you're grateful for. I fuck with that. And it's always like the most kind of simple shit. Yeah. Every time you're like, oh fuck. So it just, it kind of like makes you slow down in the morning. You write three things you're grateful for. And then I think you write three things that would make today great. That's and And then at night you do the highlights of your day. And like something, something about yourself, dude. We honestly need more shit like that. It's That's pretty, good to get it's pretty crazy though. Every every t- every time you think about it, you're like, oh shit! Like what, what would make today great? It's like pretty simple shit. Like you, yo, I hope I have no? a product. Huh? You haven't been doing it though. I haven't done it. No, I just don't even have it on me really. I was doing it in OC when I was like going through a tough time sometimes, but I haven't done it in a while. But it's definitely good for your mind, bro. I mean, it sounds corny. I don't want to be that no, guy. No, I, I actually. But it like actually that. is pretty crazy. It's just like the the self reflection, of like, you know, just slowing down and like. For sure. Yeah, you always think you want more, 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 but it's, it's the simplest shit, too. That is like I don't know. I'm wearing aloe it's and part shit of your already, rebrand, right? bro. Yeah, I'm too you're far. Dude, now. you're literally a gym influencer. Yeah. It's a good transition. I'm happy for you. Let's, Let's go. go. Nice. I'm so I want to tell people to shut the fuck up. I mean, like Jay, Jay, Jay doesn't think I'm gonna actually do it. Like, there's been a lot of people that have been like, "Yo, you've you've said this before," and you're like, "I don't know." So, what do you think is different now? I honestly, and I'm gonna post it on my story. I'm gonna like actually say like you inspired me to do it. Like, I think that's really the reason. Like, I seen that photo. I was like, "What the fuck?" And like, it was just a total transformation for you. So I was just like, "It's it was it's proof that it could happen." You know, I gotta like see it in a way. Like 120 days, man. Like. Just That'd be in. sick if next summer we're all just weapons. No, no, no. It's that. That's where I'm. All preparing. the boys move to Miami. We're just fucking tarps off. Fucking I'm, I'm weapons. literally preparing for summer. Robbing guys, girls, fucking hitting the gym, eating clean, feeling good. Fuck I'm it. excited, man. Holy shit, I'm excited. Like when that day comes. Hard work starts tomorrow. When that day comes. The whole gonna... squad's got to get jacked though. No, I'm gonna get ripped. Cause imagine then we can all post fucking photos together and shit. <clears throat> I'm gonna get ripped. I'm gonna get Jimmy Gamble's back on the grind. Day. Yeah, what happened to your transformation, man? I see your photo on Instagram. Bro, I got a lot of compliments. Everyone's like, you're doing good. You're doing good. <laughs> Everyone said I lost a shit ton of weight. You lost a lot of weight, yeah. You did? How much? Bro, I was at the blackjack table. Everyone's like, yo, you look good. You look good. How much weight did you lose? Like 20 pounds. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah. Probably gonna get fat again, straight up. Yeah, so jokes being Maybe fat. Maybe get the barrel for the summer. You've been, you've been guzzing beers, eh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Had a couple too many last night. <laughs> I know we're all still gonna have a couple too many. How good did it feel when you like posted it? I knew. I, I, you just I was, knew it was over. I was I was a little nervous, bef- like two weeks out, because I was like, "Fuck, is this gonna be good enough?" I hyped it up so much, but. Hey, what's up? You're ready. Hey, you're yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's up? <laughs> How we doing? What's going on? See you guys. So, hey, what's up, buddy? Good to see you. Good to see you. Good. Good. What's up, man? All right. Good to see you, bro. Colby Covington. Good. How are you? Good. Colby Covington. All right, boys. Colby Chaos in the fucking building. <laughs> Newest member of the Happy Dad family. Let's fucking go. How you feeling? Let's fucking go. I feel good. Looking man. phenomenal, as always. Yeah, man. I got my Trump inspired suit. I got Trump to ins- uh, sign it at Mar a Lago. So got, we got his uh, painting on the back. Holy fuck. Drawn by Mr. E. So. Who makes that? Who makes that for you? That's uh, custom. My, uh, it's a custom made suit from my uh, tailor. His name's Luigi Girardi out of out of Miami. You got, I gotta set you down. You gotta get a suit from him. Yeah, fuck. Yeah, sick ones. But uh, Mr. E is the painter that, that painted it all. Oh, so, I know him. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah. So he painted uh, like a painting for for Trump and delivered it at Mar-a-Lago. And he's like, let's go deliver the suit and say what up to him. So. Fuck so, yeah. Wow. yeah. That's dope. Obviously, Trump's gonna be at the fight. Yep. That's sick. Yeah. 
good. We were listening. You're saying he, if he win, he's putting the belt around you. Yeah, yeah. I asked Dana to kind of respectfully, you know, could he step to the side and let Donald Trump put it on? Because that would that would mean everything to me, man. I'm I'm his biggest fan, and you know, he's my biggest role model. So, what better way to him to put the belt around me? I feel like Dana. That was a pretty easy yes for him. Right? <laughs> uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, he he. Sometimes he he allows other people to do it, but. Definitely. Who who better than the most famous person on planet Earth, Donald Trump? So that's like a belt. confirmed thing if you win. Yeah. When you win. Yeah, when I win, that's a confirmed thing. Go. Trump's going to come in the octagon and give me that belt. I'm going to take that belt back, and he's going to take back the White House, and we're going to make America and the <laughs> UFC great again. Oh, <laughs> I flew here. I flew here from uh, Miami last night, and I downloaded a bunch of your fights before to watch on the plane. I watched okay. both the Usman fights and the Masvidal. Hell yeah. Fucking crazy fights. And yeah, the, the Usman fight, the second one, it was so fucking close, bro. Yeah. Like, you're right. I feel like you could have easily won that fight too. Yeah. Which is crazy. So this fight, how, how you feeling? You think, how do you think it goes? Dude, I feel better than ever. You know, getting to train with you in the gym, you know, you pushed my cardio to another level. The transformation that you made, you know, has inspired me in my own career. You <laughs> in, inspired me. So, you know, I feel like I'm coming back a better version. You can watch all the tape you want on me from my past, but I'm not that same guy. I'm a different guy than then. So, you know, especially with Happy Dud flowing through my veins, no way I don't get my hand raised on Saturday night and get that undisputed title. We were just talking about the transformation. Salim's going to do 120 Start days starting tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's and Steiny was just respect. shitting on me, saying I got too cocky Dude, that now was and crazy. shit. That was insane. <laughs> That, that was, was good for you. That was sick. Yeah. That was yeah. Sick. I feel like he should be your inspiration, but that's wild. <laughs> no, we did. We did. We hit two workouts. Yeah. And they're fucking, they're fucking crazy, man. Dude. The cardio you guys do is fucking, and I'm sure that was like one quarter of like what you usually do probably, but. Nah, but what you were doing, man, just the, in the way you were doing it early in the morning, 7, 8 a.m., you were up, and then the schedule you have because all the business you do, man, is, is inspiring to see, man. You inspired me. It took me to another level, so thank you. How, how, when when did that, like, switch flip for you? Because I know you were saying before it used to be, like, super partying and stuff, but how did it, like, when did you kind of switch? Yeah, I kind of I kind of switched, like, right after college. I was like, you know, th this is the career I want to go down. If I'm going to commit myself to this and be and want to be the best in the world, I'm going to have to make some sacrifices. And I feel like, you know, I had to give up that, that lifestyle if I wanted to be the best in the world. And I promise you on Saturday night, we'll be drinking Happy Dad all Saturday night. Let's go. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, we, so we recently did Dana. And one thing that he said, I want to get your take on this, is that the problem that we're having – you know, you're very patriotic in America is that everyone is so afraid to be proud to be American. Yeah. I don't know if you saw that clip. I didn't see that clip yet. But do you have a take on that? Yeah, I, I do have a take on that. You know, you have guys like LeBron James. He's sitting down for our national anthem. What a spineless coward. What a disgrace to our country. Oh my God. You made a billion dollars in this country, bro. This is the country that gave you everything. And you want to freaking sit down for the national anthem for the four founders and people that protected and, and fought for that flag so you could have the freedom and opportunity you have today? So, you know, LeBron's a joke. He should go to China. You know, that's where he pays all these girls in these sweatshops pennies on the dollar to make his millions in merchandise. So he should go to China. Why is he in America still if he's sitting down for our national anthem? Does he actually do that? He sits? Yeah. I think he, he sat, sat the, yeah. The that's, other day. That's fucked up. Was, that, was it at the USC game? Or like... It was at that one game. I didn't know One of the game. games that he, he's playing. I think playing it was at a, yeah. his son's game. The USC I think it was game. then. It was one game I saw circulating the internet. That's now. fucking ballsy. Dude, that's disrespectful. I feel like... That was like more of a trend like three years ago, though. Yeah. I feel like people aren't really doing that now, right? Yeah. That was when the whole kneeling or like, right? Yeah. That was the when NFL, the kneeling right? was going they're around. They're still doing did he have a reason right? for sitting down? I, I just, or he just didn't respect, I don't know. Just didn't respect him, man. He's like eating some food and sitting down, not even paying attention, not even caring for, you know, the country that gave him everything. A billion dollars, dude. Like you go try and make a billion dollars anywhere else in the world. It would never happen. It would only happen in America. Yeah. Yeah, there's so no fuck we LeBron James. Shit. Yeah, we need to get that shit back though. Yeah, like people behind. I saw randomly ESPN posted that, and I'm I'm blanking on the fighter's name, but some fighter called you out, and ten thousand fans commented their country's flag on oh, your post. Oh, I think it was Rob Rob Robot. Yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. how to pronounce. Did, did you notice that or no? I noticed that, but that was bots. You know, that wasn't like real fans. That was just some bots that he bought, and it was manager bot. You know, it wasn't. Oh, that's what you think it is. Oh, I don't think I know it was bots. Oh, okay, yeah, for sure it was. A bot farm. You know how they have bot farms out there. It's not real organic followers commenting on that. I don't know too much about the whole bot oh, thing. No. My yeah. shit's all organic. Uh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Is it still? Huh? Is it still? Probably bought it as fuck, low key. <laughs> Chicks don't know that though. 
Hey, that's all you. Hey, as long as you're getting the chicks to believe it, that's all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> Who's he's on this card too, right? Oh, what, the guy you said. I don't know how to say. <coughs> Rav, Rav, Rav. Yeah, he is. Yeah, shit, shit, rat. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you have the best. I think you have the best shit talk, a hundred percent, right now in the UFC by far. I mean, everyone says McGregor's the best too, but dude, you gotta be a fucking very tied for first or close second of all time. I appreciate that, man. Dude, like, we might this well. guy's fucking hilarious, bro. Like, you're my favorite to watch in the press conferences, interviews. Like, it's so fucking funny, bro. Okay, we, we might as well get into this now. Uh, Ian Gary took his wife's last name. How do you feel about that? <laughs> Is, wait, wait, wait. Is that a real thing, though? I think so, man. It's a real thing, yeah. It's actually so, a real wait, thing. Wait, wait, wait. So a his, certified cuck. I think it's Ian and then her last name and then his last name. Yeah. Ian 22. And her so last it's her name, name goes first. Her ex-husband, he still lives. Still lives at that, that guy in that the house. That can't be true. It's true, bro. The Who's ex-husband true? lives with him. And is his nutritionist. No. Yeah. That's cuck. Dude, he's a cuck. He's wait, wait, wait. So it's her well ex-husband. Guys, guys jerking bro. off in, in all the meals wait, and shit. Wait, wait. Her <laughs> ex-husband is his nutritionist? Ian Gary 22, bro. That's what I, we should call him. <laughs> that's crazy, bro. Right. I don't. It sounds too fake. Do you think like. And she's like twice his age. It's, it's the whole dynamic is fucked. Okay, has, for, has he responded to that at all? Like, his what's his defense? Yeah, he I turned off his comments. That's how he responded. He got fucking sensitive up in his. Field. I'd be sensitive too, bro. How do you do that? Okay, what about your wife? You're the chick you're gonna marry. She is worth five hundred mil. Says, yeah, we'll get married, no prenup, but you have to take my last name. Dude, that'd be like stepping in shit, and you're not gonna wipe the shit off your shoes. Get that shit out of there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see any scenario where that could ever be a possibility. Damn, I don't know. I really want to see his. I, I feel like he's gonna get fucking ripped tomorrow, right? Oh, for sure, he's gonna get. Are ripped. you gonna go in on him? Oh, I, I'm saving all my good stuff. I'm not gonna <laughs> talk yeah. to okay. him. Okay, wow. Just wait for the press conference tomorrow. How How do you prepare like your chirps, or is it all off the rip? Dude, it's all organic, off the rip. Just facts. I just hit people with truth, and people get mad that I state the truth. Yeah, that's it. You know, I just give. I take the skeletons out of their closet and I bring it to the light. Yeah, I'm not afraid to go down that 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 path that people don't want to go down you just went on the media day and said fuck lebron right i just saw that right yeah now. he's a bitch just like that houston coach said i agree with that guy houston or oh you made i seen that i was at that game he said you, you guys gotta stop acting like bitches like a coach said it to lebron yeah and then he was like yo don't don't use that word so loosely or something like that yeah he's like you don't know where i'm from yeah he was like coming at him and stuff lebron's the softest guy on the planet he's got like the most like fake fouls in nba history why do why do you think why do you think that he acts like that? Why do you think he like sits for the anthem and stuff? You think just because he's getting all his money from China and stuff? I think because he's. Yeah, you think he's, it's like part of China's psyop shit? I think so. Yeah, I think that's a, a big reason. That's where all his money comes from, and he's a patent bot guy by by China. So, you know, that's where NBA makes all their money. That's why they were yeah. doing the kneeling in the first place and doing all the BLM stuff. So. Yeah. At least Dude, not. that makes no sense. I'm from fucking Canada, and even when I came here, like America's a fucking great country man like yeah. if you want to achieve your dreams too like what about you what could do anything you want here bro like it's true if you're if you're making excuses you're just a fucking loser like yeah what about the canada did the uh, the troops thing is that real the tampon thing is that yeah, real canada is just about this? fucked up right now bro is it? it's sad i mean it's not the same as when i grew up yeah it's just totally different now post COVID, especially too and then trudeau is just like Ugh. a fucking he's probably a chinese puppet too but yeah For i saw sure. that the government is or the military is now supplying male soldiers with tampons what like transgender so like they're oh. paying for the tampons dude. for the canadian military soldiers that's sad dude how how are people not proud to be an american bro <laughs> if you're seeing shit like that right you know i dude. mean no offense america might probably do that soon no too. we're not doing that no. we can't colby we can't allow that we can't allow that we have this the strongest military unit in the entire world everybody fears american you know, military. So there's no way that's going to infiltrate our military. But, you know, we do need to end the wokeness. This, this shit's getting out of hand, man. The shit they're trying to teach in these schools and, and, and indoctrinate these kids growing up is, is dis disgusting. And they're raising betas. They're not raising alphas anymore. Yeah. What, how'd you get like so into politics and stuff? Were you always just like passionate about it? No, I didn't get into like uh, 2016 when, when Trump first started running. I always respected him as a businessman. I watched, uh, 
you know, all his shows and, and just love the way he did business and he achieved the American dream. That's everything I wanted. I wanted to be everything he was. So I got in when he got in and they said he had no chance and, and the fake news said Hillary was a, a shoe in winner and, and they tried to lie to us. And, and I saw all the truth that, that Trump was saying and, you know, I've just been the biggest fan of him ever since. I'm not really into politics. I'm just the biggest Trump fan and I care about everything he does for our country. He puts America first. How I was golfing with him. I didn't get to golf with him, but we had lunch over at uh, Trump Palm Beach, and we got to hang out. I saw him hit a a few shots, but, you know, I'm not good enough to play with him on the golf course. Yeah, that guy shoots, like, even par. He's nasty on the golf course. I went out and played nine with him once with a few other guys, and I was fucking nervous as fuck. Right. He's, I mean, he's good. He's He's really good. He's very good. Yeah, and everyone asks if he cheats and shit. I'm like, no, he's just really good, bro. Yeah. I was so What's his attitude out there like? Is he calm and composed? Yeah. I mean, he's pretty chill. Drives the cart, like, right up the green and shit. <laughs> just, like, <laughs> just like, yeah. But it's jokes. Like, yeah. he's dope. He's really good is he really good at putting? He's pretty good. Yeah, like he he's good at putts. putting, chipping. Hits the ball straight down the fairway. So what's your prediction for this fight? What do you, what do you think? My prediction is I'm going to bring out the dog in me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring out the quitter in Leon. He's a quitter. He's shown those those quitter signs. Why so. do you call him Leon Scott? I remember you said that one time. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I didn't understand that one. More people know Leon Scott in, in the UK than than they know Leon Edward Scissorhands. So, you know, he's low IQ and and the guy literally mumbles every time he talks. So, you know, I, I'd really like to know like what is his grade level education? I don't think he went through middle school. I'd love to know it. You think he's a tougher fight than Newsman? No, nah, no, nah, this is a way easier fight than Usman. Usman was, when I fought Usman, he was at his peak. He was at his prime. You know, that was the number one pound for pound fighter on earth. And, you know, I thought I beat him. I thought I, I thought I won the fight. A lot of the fans thought I won the fight. So, you know, this is a lot easier fight. Usman was a lot more well-rounded than Leon. Leon's kind of one-dimensional. He likes to just set up his little leg kicks, his high kick, and, and that's it. But we'll see what happens when he's got raw America steel and twisted sex appeal in his face for 25 minutes straight. <laughs> what the? He did look pretty sharp in his last fight with Usman, though, uh, Leon. But did you Think? see all the clips online of the cheating he did? He was no. grabbing the fence like four times, hitting the nuts, grabbing the gloves, poking the eyes. Literally, there was a compilation on Twitter the other day on X of, of all the cheating that he did in that fight, and he probably had like seven or eight fouls. It was literally egregious. Damn. You don't think Leon's in his prime right now? Yeah, he's in his prime, but... Prime Leon is not the same as Prime Usman, and Prime Leon still doesn't have enough. It doesn't matter what he's done, how much takedown defense he's practiced for, he's not going to be able to stop what I'm going to do to him. Dude, it's going to be so – I think if – if when you win this fight, I think it's just going to be – there's so much big fights out there for you too. Yeah. Like I, I saw Islam say that he wants to move up to welterweight. Yeah. How would you feel about a fight like that? That would be a fucking super fight. Yeah, that'd be a great fight. It'd be a fight that his daddy, Khabib, never wanted to do. He talked about it. He said he was going to come to 170 all these times, but they never actually walked the talk. So, you know, I know Islam's out there talking, but is he going to walk the walk or is he just going to talk the talk? Because it's a great fight. You know, it's a Rocky Four storyline. Uh, Rocky versus Drago. It's uh, America versus Russia, USA wrestling versus Sambo. So I think it could be the biggest fight of the highest magnitude, but is Islam going to make it? Because I'm not going to 55. He's going to have to come to welterweight. What do you think is the biggest difference between Dagestani wrestling and, and American wrestling that you're so confident in? The Dagestani wrestling, the way they wrestle, they re- really wrestle really upright, and they don't, they don't really scramble because they don't wrestle uh, folk-style wrestling, and that's like what the American NCAA Division One wrestling is. So he doesn't understand like scrambling and like going to the mat and, and how to control people like that. He just understands like the basic freestyle wrestling that they, they wrestle in the Olympics. So... It's just a different level. I, I know I can take him to a place that he's never been. And I did train the first guy that ever knocked him out, Adriana Martins. And he was another southpaw. So, you know, I know I could be the same guy to do the same thing to him. Does he walk around at, like, more weight than you? For sure, yeah. He's That's like, crazy. Do you think Islam walks around with, like, 190 at max probably, right? Yeah. Probably 195, close to 200. Yeah. I'm, like, 183. I mean, I'm not cutting any weight. Why, why don't you cut weight? I just... You know, I don't want to cut those chromosomes off my body. I don't want to have to kill myself. And I don't want to be a weight bully. I want to fight in my natural way and prove that I'm the best in the world. Like, if you're the best in the world, you shouldn't have to cut all that weight, you know? And I feel like it's, a, it's cheating. It's legal cheating being able to cut that much weight and have that type of advantage in the fight. So I don't want to do it. I'll show people that I'm the best at my weight without cutting. 
what other super fights do you see if you win when you win this fight? Yeah, I see the you know I see the Islam fight. I see the the Sean Strickland fight. He's been talking and kind of running his mouth. Yeah, what's going on with that? Yeah, I wonder. I hey, couldn't imagine. What's that the back of press conference? Uh, <laughs> I'd be <laughs> fucked. Andrew Strickland. That'd be oh, fucked. I'd walk circles around him. That guy's dumber <laughs> than a box of rocks. That guy's so dumb. What what's up with the talking I, between I, you? I and think him? he's funny too. We had him on the pod too. He's he's definitely not the smartest guy, <laughs> but he's he's funny. Yeah. But I think he's so popular because he's such a he's an idiot. Yeah. But like he's funny, <laughs> you know. I don't know. I just think he's just plain dumb saying women should only be in the kitchen. Like I'd like to see him say that to my friend Candace Owens. I think Candace Owens would walk circles around him and make him look like a little kid that should be in the kitchen. So, you know, shout out to Candace Owens. But Sean's an idiot, man. The guy, he literally couldn't cut it in my division, so he had to run from 170 to go to 85. And everybody knows 170 is the premier division of the UFC. So once you go north past 170, the fights get easy. The, the fights aren't as athletic, and the guys are slower, and they're more one-dimensional. So, of course, he couldn't cut it in my weight division. He went up to a, a pussy weight division. Strickland went at you a lot too, right? Yeah. Yeah, he, t- he caught you weaselly. It was like friendly. <laughs> Friendly? Nah, he was. Better he not be to, talking about my voice, tiny like that. Thank you, bro. I'll smack no, the he shit said you wanted to smash your head. Yeah, he said he wanted to take my face. Did he said he wanted to like corner. kill him or something. Like, really? dude, and I, <laughs> I just got off the plane. I was tired. I was looking to press him back in that situation. Yeah, yeah for you sure, feel me? bro. Yeah, come on, dude. You got bigger fish to fry. Yeah, come on. I have other shit I got to attend. Like he's gonna, yeah. who knows? What's he doing with this worthless life? He still lives in a fucking trailer park. Yeah, it's a fucking trailer trash. I don't know. I am like, but he would kill me. Kill like, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, like, not. Kill, no, kill. but he wouldn't just like beat my ass. Like he'd go for murder. So oh, I, yeah, I kind of sure. wanted to fade that one. Yeah, for sure. You got to pick your fights, right? Yeah. yeah. You yeah. got too many mamacitas that impress in South Beach. Exactly. <laughs> he said he wanted to kill you. Is that what he said? <laughs> well, dude, if I do my 120 day transformation, like post transformation, I might have handled it differently. That's true. Yeah. You can't go in there like with a gut. Yeah, no. After a long night and yeah. be confident. Long night of partying and no sleeping. Yeah. That wouldn't be good. No. Yeah. So we'll we'll revisit that one. Did yeah. um a lot of people were saying the the New York thing didn't happen because of John Jones. He didn't want you on the same stage as him. Was there any truth to that? There was truth to that. You know, he didn't want to share a car with me. He didn't want me to be on that pay per view spectacle because he knew what was gonna happen at the press conference. He knows the type of show and entertainment that I bring and he didn't want his skeletons of his past and all that dark secrets in his closet being revealed, you know? Who knows better than, than the guy that lived with him for two years, you know? I, I wrestled, I shared a bunk with him, you know? I asked him That's for the bottom bunk. Nuts. So what school was that? That was... Iowa Central Iowa. Community College. Wow. Yeah. And how, how'd you guys, like, originally meet? Just on the wrestling team? Just on the wrestling team, yeah. We both got recruited there. He, you know, he had to go the, 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 the uh, JC route junior college because he didn't he failed grades and I decided to go JC because I didn't want to go right into D1 I wanted to have a development in a couple years and then go to division one after that so we met both on the wrestling team Damn. how long were you guys Wait. sharing like a room together we shared a room together for almost two years a year and a half like uh like five semesters Holy shit. John before Jones. he failed out started doing steroids and and drugs and you know was he a good roommate no, nah, he's a terrible roommate. He always left clothes around the house and like dirty dishes. And he was, he would always like tell me to do the dishes. I'm like, bro, I'm not doing your fucking dishes, dude. <laughs> it I don't seems care like the guy when he are. shits, he like stains the porcelain, even if he flushes, like it still sticks to the, <laughs> the like that type of guy. That's like gambles. Yeah. <laughs> I hate people that do that. Wait, so I honestly don't even know. What was the, when did that falling out there happen? Yeah, it just, it happened out when he started shooting testosterone up because he wanted to go to heavyweight and uh, he just, started his emotions started he couldn't keep them in check and he just started freaking out and and you know i just realized how bad of a person it is look look at his history you know hitting a pregnant lady at a stop line hitting his wife in in the hotel and leaving her bleeding having to go to a las vegas jail you know countless steroid tests he's failed drugs this that the, the guy's the, literally the poster tile for being the biggest fuck up in the ufc history god damn <laughs> I've always actually wanted to ask you this. What, what would be your favorite fight you ever had in the UFC? Favorite fight I ever yeah. had? Yeah, like that you ever, like, person you ever faced. Like, a fun fight. Because I know Kamar Usman said um, <clears throat> when you guys fought the first time in the fifth round, you guys had this, like, you know, back and forth of, like, yo, we're going to strike. Like, fun fights. Like, what's your, like, favorite fun fight that you ever had? 
Yeah, I would definitely say the fights with Usman were my funnest fights. You know, he was regarded as the, he was, you know, ranked as the number one pound for pound fighter on earth. So, you know, to go out there and show that, you know, I was better than him and, and beat him in those fights. Maybe I didn't get the judge's decision and maybe I got screwed by a ref in the fir first fight. It was a Las Vegas screw job with Mark Not So Goddard. You know, he's anti-Brexit, so he hates Trump, so he hates everything I stand for, so he called so many bad fouls against me. I kicked Usman in the liver. He knew he was going to quit. He called the nut shot. He got a five-minute timeout. I mean, he poked me in the eye. Just the countless cheating in that, but that's why it's called the Las Vegas screw job. And then going on to the second fight in Madison Square Garden, you know, I beat him, and every, and every fan in Madison Square Garden told me on the way out, you know, that I beat him. So, you know, he knew deep down inside that, that I was a better man than him, and, you know, maybe we're going to see each other in the future for a trilogy. You think that happens? I think it's a possibility, you know, with how close those fights were. And, you know, our, our last fight in Madison Square Garden is the fourth highest gate in Madison Square Garden history. Our names wow. will always be etched there. So, you know, I think there's definitely a potential of that fight happening in the future again. Is that one that you'd really like to, to, to run back? I would like to run that fight back. You know, I've improved a lot over the years. I, I feel like he's slowing down. You know, no, no discredit to what he's done in the sport. He's done some great things, but... You know, I'd like to fight him again. I, th I think it's a, it's a great rivalry that needs to be rehashed. Damn, that'd be crazy. A lot yeah, of people, a lot of people are talking about the two years you had off. H how do you think that that's going to affect you for the fight? A lot of the people that are talking about those things have never been in a fist fight, so they know nothing about uh, what those two years off did. You know, I think those two years off were some of the most crucial years of my life because it made me dig deep and decide what I really want in my life. Like I didn't have to come back, but the hunger is still inside me bigger than ever. And, you know, I've improved my craft tremendously in that time. You know, I've taken the time to really focus on little small weaknesses that I had in my game, even though I'm a perfect, complete fighter and well-rounded, I found little areas in my game where I could get better. So, you know, no matter what you've watched in tapes from my past fights, Saturday night, you're going to see a completely different version of myself. That's Would you crazy. ever go up to, to middleweight? I would, but, you know, I want to make welterweight division great again. And by doing that, I got to clear out all the contenders in welterweight first. So, you know, I have unfinished business here. All Anybody that wants to fight me, they're going to have to come to my weight class and fight me. And, you know, there's one thing that Colby Chaos Covington wants, and, and that's the undisputed title. And Colby Covington gets what Colby Covington wants. How do, how do you see yourself winning the fight? Finish, like... Yeah, I could see myself finishing him. You know, I could see a submission or a knockout. You know, he, everybody's talking, you know, wrestle, 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 you know. So I could take him down at will. I know I can. He doesn't know the things that I learned when I was a kid. Just some of the muscle memory that I have in my body, you can't teach that or train that. You know, it's a lifetime of work, 35 years of blood, sweat, and tears in the wrestling room and, and, and you know, achieving that American dream. So Saturday night, he, he's in for a rude awakening. He could say whatever he wants, but... You know, there's a reason he didn't want this fight in the first place, and Saturday night he's going to find out why. I'm so fucking hyped. What do you think of, um, do you think McGregor ever comes back and fight uh, in fights? And what do you think of the whole USADA thing that, that went down? Yeah, that was very shady by USADA. I think that was a fucked up move for them to do that. They're never supposed to reveal anything that goes on. They're supposed to, you know, be quiet about all that stuff. So they, they violated HIPAA. So I think the UFC should sue them, and they should, you know, take them for everything they have. That was very fucked up, and... I don't know if Connor comes back. You know, I see now he wants to be the prime minister of Ireland. I think he would be a great politician for them. He, who knows better to fight for their people than a, a fighting world champion in Connor McGregor. So I think Connor would do great things, you know, as, you know, the, the president or prime minister of, of Ireland. And, you know, who knows if we ever see him back. That, that's up to him. Fuck, I know they found blow in the White House. They're definitely going to find it in the, <laughs> the Irish Parliament, though, if he's fucking... You don't think he, you don't think he fight, fights Chandler at 300, like UFC 300? The Bidens are going out there for a, for a meeting right away, right when he gets <laughs> right. into office. Uh, no, I, don't, I honestly, I don't think he fights again. What's his motivation level? You know, he's, he's made a lot of money, and, you know, what's the point to come back and fight a guy like Mike Chandler and give him that platform? So, you know, he just keeps delaying, and he's, he's, not, you know, he's not all in anymore. He's all out, so... You know, he had his great run. He's made a history in this sport, but I think he's done as a fighter. If he does come back, I feel like he's going to fight at welterweight, though, right? I think so. He looks pretty big. He's not going to fight at 155, right? No. no he look, yeah. That fight was already supposed to be at 170, right? Yeah, they were going to do that fight at 170. So, yeah, I think if he comes back, he's going to fight at 170. He's not going to want to cut all that weight to 55. So, you know, if he comes back, he's probably going to want the biggest and best fight the UFC can off offer him, and that's not going to be a guy in Mike Chandler. That guy's a nobody.
You think he's trying to push for a title shot like too too soon? Is that why like he's probably not coming back so fast? I, th- I think so. I would, yeah. I would think that would be the reason, you know, for delaying it is maybe having one fight, which he probably doesn't really want to do. He wants to like have the biggest and be- best fights. But I would think that would be the reason. Would you guys think so? I think he'll be back UFC 300. You think so? I think so. Wouldn't it? Know. It would have to be announced. I don't now, know. Though. I have no inside info, but yeah, it has to be announced now. No, they haven't announced that yet. No, I know. I'm just saying, like UFC 300 well, no. is a huge card, so like. Yeah, I mean that would be the time he'd come back yeah. pretty soon, right? Yeah, you would think, but you never know how his health is, or you know what his motivation level is. But he keeps showing clips of him training, so it, I mean it seems that he's coming back, but he could just be, you know, keep keeping fans lingering around so he can, you know, sell his whiskey and sell all his other sponsorship stuff to keep them hyped. How's your relationship with the UFC evolved over the years? Because I know at the beginning you were kind of like going at the UFC and more, yeah. and now you've become more like, you know, you praise the UFC, say what a good company it is and stuff. How's that relationship evolved yeah, over it's, the years? It's evolved, you know, immensely over the years. You know, I'm very thankful for the UFC giving me everything they've given me. I wouldn't be anything. You know, I came from nothing in Oregon. You know, I was a blue collar kid in a blue collar family with nothing. And now I'm, you know, a multimillionaire. So that's all thanks to them. They've, completely changed my life and I didn't understand that in the beginning I was a little upset you know I I feel like I got unjustly stripped of my title that I had at the time and you know I had to get a serious surgery and they, and they knew that and the doctor even said it was one of the most serious sinus surgeries they'd ever seen in the history of of uh, sinus surgeries so you know I thought I got unjustly stripped only on four weeks notice and and I was upset at the time and you know I was lashing out but I was a lot younger then and I wasn't mature and I was just immature I shouldn't have went about my business that way I should have been a lot more thankful to Dana and Hunter and and the whole team at the UFC for what they provided, the platform, the money, everything. So, you know, I'm very thankful for the company now today. I'm a company man. I'll do whatever they want me to do. I love this company, and I will retire and be a UFC fighter for life. What do you think of all these other companies pumping up now? I saw the PFL. They just acquired Bellator. You think, like, PFL has any chance with ever competing with the UFC? No, no one's ever going to compete with the UFC. That's like saying... Oh, if someone starts a NFL a football league, are they going to be able to compete with the NFL? It's just their platform. Like, yeah. Their platform's too big. You know, it's silly. Dana White's the best promoter in, in in all of sports, and you know he doesn't put a muzzle on us. He gives us freedom to express whatever we want to express. You know, all these other owners in the NFL and NBA, they put a, a muzzle on you and they say, hey, you can only believe this woke fucking crap, and you take it as shit, and you, you say it's flaming yawn. So it's not right. That is crazy how the UFC just doesn't give a fuck about what's said like i know like yeah. nhl they can't say shit nba's yeah. were or like a little better and then nfl's, NFL's whatever, the but, worst yeah by far really yeah oh, yeah. nfl's gotta be the worst yeah oh NBA yeah will be second. by far but that's why their their ratings are plummeting you know no one no one wants to watch that shit anymore if you're stand if you're disrespecting our flag you know there's a lot of people that fought and died for that flag there's a lot of families in america that have lost you know soldiers and that fought for those freedom so these guys could go on TV and make these millions of dollars. They play a fucking kids game. Like LeBron, dude, you play, you put a basketball on a hoop, big deal, little kids do that shit. Yeah. So, yeah. it's a joke. <laughs> Yo, so funny. <laughs> yeah, Kobe's got to run into LeBron one day. That'd be fucking Oh, I would hilarious. love to. You think he what sees, happened if you, you seen him in person? All the sh- you say? Oh, yeah. I saw him. Yeah. He said some something about me one time in the past. He was like, oh, that guy wouldn't say it if you saw me face to face. And then I saw him in the design district after he paid Miami like two years ago. And I was going to walk up to him and all his security like, please, Kobe, please, please don't say anything to LeBron. Please, please. I, it was right outside Swan. He was walking through the design district and I was about to say something to him. And they were like, please. I was like, I'm going to give him this pass, but I promise you next time I see him, I'm giving him the biggest wedge he's ever had. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Nerd. The greatest clip of all time, bro. What would you right. say to LeBron if you, like, I mean, face to face, if you were to have came up to him? I would say, you're a communist piece of shit. You hate this country, and this country gave you everything, and you're just a piece of shit. You don't, you don't even have your own voice. You just let all these talking points from the swamp tell you what to say. Yeah. All right, well, fight week episode, so Colby up, Covington. Bro. Honestly, I'm so pumped for this whole week. Hell yeah. If Thank they're watching this, the press conference was yesterday, but I'm pumped for the press conference. We'll be at the weigh-in. Yeah. First, first fucking couple rows. Appreciate you sure you'd that. rather have Thank Trump you. give you the belt than us? Ah, that's a tough choice, you know. Yeah. As long as you guys are in the octagon right next maybe to him. Maybe we do it with him. Then you'll make my dream come true. Stein, okay. putting the belt on? Yeah. Dude, that'd be my dream come true. <laughs> maybe so not yours. That <laughs> might not be good for you, though. <laughs> Trump's probably a better look. 
Uh, Trump will put the belt on me, and then I'll give the belt to you, and you can put it on Trump. Done. How about that? What's your plan after the fight when you win? Definitely kind of plan on joining you guys and having a nice post-fight celebration. Hell yeah. No, I appreciate you, bro. Honestly, as a fan of the sport, too, yeah, you're now that you're part man. of Team Happy Dad, it's fucking yeah. dream come true. And just everything you do when you bring it to, like, what you do this week for the fans, the entertainment, it's fucking... 10 out of 10, bro. I'm pumped Thank up for the fight. Yeah, let's go, Colby bro. Colby Chaos Covington, baby. Let's go. Thank, you. Thank you, Salim.